How's it going there guys? Dave Nero here, and today I have another movie review, and as I'm recording this, it's Christmas Day, and so Merry Christmas, and this review for Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, is definitely late, nine days late to be exact, because the movie came out on December 16th, so I apologize for that, let's just move on from that, because I was like, you know what, I'm just, I don't care if it's going to be a late review, I want to talk about this movie. The plots, I'm not really going to get into it, and you know what, it's fairly simple anyway, you've probably heard of it, but just real quick, it's about a group of rebels who are trying to get the plans to the Death Star so that they can look through it and find a weak point and give it to the rebels, and of course that leads directly into the original Star Wars. This movie takes place almost immediately before the original Star Wars. So there you go, there's the plot. Let's talk about the movie. The movie's great, really great actually. I had tons of fun watching this movie. You know, again, after after being so satisfied walking out of The Force Awakens, I wasn't nearly as nervous going into this movie because that movie satisfied me so much. I was just like, I don't even care if the rest of them suck because I thought The Force Awakens, personally, I thought it was so good. Uh, but even so, I still was like, oh man, I really want this movie to be good. I've been hearing about it's going to be like a war movie, you know, which it should be because it's a Star Wars movie. Going for a whole gritty war movie vibe. I really hope they nail that. And they did. This movie definitely is the grittiest and most violent film in the series and especially in the last 30 minutes, the entire climax of this movie. I don't want to directly compare it to Saving Private Ryan per se, but in general it just reminded me of like a modern World War II film, but of course with the sci-fi gadgetry. Uh, just ver that whole aspect that you've been hearing about for a while, I thought the movie did a great job with that. The movie is directed by Gareth Edwards and man, I thought his, or I thought he did a good job with Godzilla. Man, this movie has incredible cinematography. Such a beautiful looking movie. I mean, two times in a row we've had pretty much the best film Star Wars movies in the series with Force Awakens and now Rogue One. These movies, both these movies have incredible cinematography. And there are times where this impressed me even more than The Force Awakens ever did. That's really saying something. Just beautiful looking movie. And of course the visual effects. I knew they were going to be good, but man, some of the best CGI ever in a movie, by far. There are times where the ships, and especially the character K2SO, looks almost real, so close to real. And there's a great blend of practical effects as well, which was done even better here than it ever was in The Force Awakens, but I keep on comparing this to Force Awakens. Maybe I should shy away from doing that, not supposed to do that in movie reviews, but you know what I mean. Just the point is, this movie just is visually beautiful to look at from from a visual effects standpoint, mixed in with the practical effects, but also just the camera work. It's so well done. There's like not a single unconvincing special effect in this movie, including the CGI that is done to bring certain actors who appeared in previous Star Wars films who have passed on back in this movie. You know, in Tron Legacy, they pioneered that type of technology to make a 30-year-old Jeff Bridges. Didn't really work out even back in 2010. The technology has come so much farther, and I'm just going to go ahead and give it away. You know, basically, Peter Cushing is back through the power of CGI, playing Graham Moff Tarkin in this movie, and yes, I could tell it was CGI, but it's just such an improvement on the technology and so much better than anything I've seen before that I didn't care. It was so impressive. And I just basically, you know, the majority of the time, I forgot that it wasn't actually Peter Cushing. Very well done. Um, but let's move on to the characters, the rest of the characters now. Jen Erso, uh, played by Felicity Jones, she's really good. And yet another good female protagonist for a Star Wars movie. Um, though she's definitely not like a ripoff of Rey or anything. She's very likable. Felicity Jones did a great job in the emotional scenes, but she also has a good sense of humor. She's very likable, and she has a good sense of, you know, hope to her that inspires others. That was, you know, heartwarming to see. She has plenty of good banter, good one-liners. She's great in the action scenes. I thought she did a good job with her fight choreography. I mean, maybe a decent amount of it was done by a stunt person. I don't care. Either way, I loved her character. Diego Luna plays Cassian in this movie, and I really loved him as well because he has sort of a moral dilemma about him, which I'm not going to get into too much because I'm trying to stray, or stray away from spoilers, as any good reviewer should, but he has sort of a moral dilemma about him, and you can tell there are just definitely some aspects of being a rebel that he does not like, and you know it hurts him to do as a person, and I loved seeing where he was kind of debating with... Um, with Jin Urso, and they're kind of getting in each other's faces about what direction they should take the mission. Very well done, they have good chemistry there. Great great acting all around. Forrest Whitaker's character has a weird accent. I still thought it was a really good performance, though. 
and I didn't mind the accent. Thought I, I thought it added a good quirky aspect to the character because he's kind of supposed to be a really weird, quirky character, and I thought they did a good job for what they were going for there. K2SO, played by Alan Tudyk. Oh man, so good in this movie. I don't know why, but I was a little, like, walking into the movie, I was like, I don't know about the K2SO character. I wonder if his humor is going to come off as forced. Oh, he's so funny. So many good lines in this movie. So many good one-liners. Just, he's hilarious. Really, truly. Like, not just funny. Like, I was laughing out loud, belly laughing quite a few times in this movie because of him. But at the same time, it was really well balanced out with more dramatic stuff and the gritty tone, so it didn't feel like it was a needless humor that was just... It, it wasn't like Michael Bay humor that's just taking away from scenes that are supposed to be dramatic. You know, it's just very well handled. Uh, the motion capture, the CGI was just fantastic. It looked so real. And he was also good in the action scenes, what little action he had. That was really well done. Donnie Yen, obviously, amazing fight choreography in this movie, but I liked his actual acting as well. And his friend, what's the name of the actor who played him? I think it's Zhang Wen, something to that effect? I can't remember the character's name, but the point is, he um, he's probably the least developed of the main characters in the movie, but he was pretty likable. He had good one-liners. Um, he had a really cool gun that definitely did a good job of keeping the characters out of a sticky situation. I thought the actor did a good job with this performance. I liked the relationship that he had with Donnie Yen's character. And uh, the other character, the kind of... Er, Riz Ahmed, I think that's his name, uh, he was kind of the nerdy character of the group, and I also liked him. He had some pretty funny moments. I loved all the main characters in this movie. Even Ben Mendelsohn, who I've, I've heard him getting some flack from some critics for this movie, and I don't really understand why, because I thought he did a great job playing the villain in this movie. You know, he doesn't just come off as some whiny, snooty guy who's, you know, trying to move up in, you know, in his ranks in uh, the Empire. You know, I, I thought that he would kind of come off like that, but I really um, actually related to his character, and I liked his performance, and there was some decent humor with this character, and I, you know, found myself, like, not even loving to hate the guy, like, I actually found the guy pretty likable in the role, um, just, you know, just the way he phrased things that he said. I, I really liked Ben Mendelsohn's performance in this movie, um, and, yeah, just thought he did a good job as the villain, I great for what they're trying to go for with this character. So again, all great characters, amazing visually to look at. The action scenes in this movie, so good. Like, so good. And actually, this movie isn't quite as action-packed as I was expecting it to be. Like, in the first half of the movie, there's really not that much action. I mean, it takes a good 20 to 25, maybe even 30 minutes to get to the first, like, big battle scene. Uh, but when there is action, so satisfying. Amazing cinematography again. Great fight choreography from everyone, not just Donnie Yen. There's a, a lot more hand-to-hand -hand combat in, than we've ever seen in a Star Wars movie in this movie. Very well handled there. Brutal, uh, you know, gritty. It's a lot more violent than other Star Wars movies. Very well handled. Amazing use of special effects. There's a lot of CGI explosions, sure, but there's also really good use of pyrotechnics that does a good job of drawing you into the movie and adding a layer of reality. And, as I said earlier in the review, the entire last 30 minutes of this movie, so gritty, it reminded me of a World War II movie, and so intense, and by the end of the movie, I cared about the characters so much, and admittedly, the characters, you, you really find almost nothing about hardly any of their backstories, excepting Felicity Jones, Jen Erso. Um, you, you know, you see her relationship with her dad, uh, Mads Mikkelsen, who is also fantastic in the movie, predictably so, because he's Mads Mikkelsen, he's an amazing actor. But uh, despite the fact that you don't really get much info on, like, their backstories, the movie does a great job of painting, like, you know, the type of people they are as human beings, or in the case of K2SO, or droid. And you really get a feel for, you know, who they are, the type of people they are, and the performances are so good that I still found myself really loving the characters, and I cared for them in the last 30 minutes, and it made certain moments hard to watch, of course not giving anything away. Uh, just very intense and gritty and brutal, amazingly well choreographed, beautiful to look at, amazing, just great sweeping shots. The aerial battles, like the space battles in this movie, as far as the CGI battle, or space battles go, I mean, this is like pretty much the best they've ever been. 
the entire series. I mean, it puts the Star Wars prequels to shame. It even puts Force Awakens to shame. I thought that movie did a great job with the few space battles that it had. It's just really amazing, incredible action. And Darth Vader in this movie has two scenes. I don't care. He's not really a main character in the movie anyway. He's not supposed to be, so I, I didn't expect him to be. I knew Ben Mendelsohn was the villain. And what amount you do see him, I thought it was perfectly done. James Earl Jones, whoa, so good. <laughs> of course he's going to be. James Earl Jones is Darth Vader again. Just perfect Darth Vader. And I mean, one scene in particular, the second scene that he's in the movie, oh man. I'm, I mean, yeah, I'm a Star Wars fanboy. I can't deny it. And I like, um, I just about teared up a little bit. I was like, it's so beautiful. It's so good. Um, but seriously, being serious, it's... Uh, Darth Vader, I don't care that he's only in this movie a little bit. He, it was so well executed that I, you know, the fact that he's in the movie five minutes didn't matter to me at all. And this is coming from a big Star Wars fanboy. I mean, you expect me to be like, oh, what the heck? He was only in the movie for like four or five minutes. Done so well that I didn't care. Um, overall, just a very well paced movie. The movie always kept me very interested in the story, which is. Um, you know, fairly simple. It's just kind of them finding the plans of the Death Star, but the movie has such a good undercurrents of emotion, and you really get to care about these characters so much. There's great dialogue throughout, good moments of humor balanced out by great drama. A really good score by Michael Giacchino, who is one of my favorite contemporary composers, so he, I thought that was a perfect choice to replace John Williams as the composer in this movie. All around, such a great movie, and if you haven't seen it already, I would definitely say check it out. It's totally worth your time. I am going to give it an A. Now, if you enjoyed this review, I hope you did. And if you liked it, please rate and comment and subscribe. And if you want to, you can also share. Goodbye, guys, and Merry Christmas.